Alright, so if you've got a V1.1 orbiter extruder, you know that the uh, filament path is made up of a heat break that screws into the bottom of the, the extruder. Um, this works fine most of the time, but occasionally it gives me issues with flexible filaments. And so I've started setting it up slightly differently based on some advice that the uh, original designer gave me. So I was about to do that in this one. Um, and I thought I'd stop and show everyone how I go about doing it. So first off, I put this file here in my vise. Sorry, I'm just making sure everything's focused where it should be. <coughs> and then I take the uh, heat break right here, and I put it in the drill chuck using a smooth end. Now be careful when you tighten that truck. It doesn't need much tightening, and if you tighten it too much, you'll end up with a nice triangular hole. So that's that's me uh, accidentally tightening it the wrong way. So just tighten it enough that it stays like this. Now you'll notice I've already done this. The bevel is already here. I'm just doing this to show exactly what it is I do. So I put the drill on high speed and then right here on the file just run it back and forth until you get rid of the square edge you want to try and end up with as little flat as possible on the tip here. It doesn't take very long, just run it a few times, check it. I'm gonna try to make my angle slightly more than 45 degrees here, that's about what I've got. If you can get to 60, that's probably ideal. So a 60 degree angle, and just run it like this. And this gives you a nice even bevel all the way across and helps to get rid of the square edge. And that's looking really good. So like I said, I had already done it, so it went really fast. It might take as much as two minutes of that normally. Be careful because that heat break is hot now. So then the next thing we want to do is line up the hobs so that they're perfectly even with the filament path. So here's one of my uh, orbiter extruders. I print my own and because um, I often need it to be mirrored. So <coughs> they, the uh, online sellers don't seem to sell them mirrored. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the inside hob here. So here is the grub screw that holds that hob in place. Just loosen it. We don't need it loosened much, just enough so that it wiggles side to side on the shaft, but still stays exactly where it needs to be on the, the flat the flat of the, the shaft here. Um, now I'm able to turn this, and what I'll do is put thread the uh, heat break in here. Now because I print my own, these threads are very tight and this isn't easy to do by hand. So I'm just going to use my drill to tighten it in there on low speed. There we go. So now I just need to tighten it until it gets to almost touching the hob but not quite. That looks pretty good. So it's not making contact. Now what I'm doing is I'm turning the hob while I tighten the heat break into it until I feel it rubbing. There, now it's rubbing. And what that does is it makes the, the hob line up with the filament path because it lines up with the cone with the beveled edge. And then once I've got it so that it's rubbing all the way around, that means the hob is probably nicely centered. So now I can take my uh, Allen wrench, Allen key, and tighten this thing, tighten the grub, so that the pulley stays exactly centered. There we go. Nice and tight, shouldn't move from there. And then back off the heat break just a little bit so that it's not making contact with the uh, hob while you're actually using it. 
It needs a little more. There we go. So now it's not rubbing anymore. It's really, really close. And the filament path is as constrained as can be. There we go.